Well, I was rather tentative about speaking here tonight because the concept of a story slam sort of seems so at odds with the world of medicine that I normally inhabit, you know, where really nothing's supposed to come out of my mouth unless it's level one evidence supported by at least, you know, two randomized controlled trials. <laughs> and so, you know, a story slam, story slam doesn't really seem the natural habitat for an academic internist. But, you know, it's good to try something new. So, you know, over the last couple of weeks, I've been thinking about how can I approach the story slam. And it struck me that a story slam is really literally about pe asking people to speak up. So thinking of it in those terms sort of shook loose the memories about speaking up or not speaking up. Um, and so here I am. So one episode that I remember in particular, when I was a first year medical student, we were assigned an inpatient on whom we were supposed to practice taking a medical history. So I had a, a woman in her late 30s who was having an elective surgical procedure. I don't remember what it was, but I remember going to her room, you know, excited, eager to see her, anxious about actually talking to a real patient, and also nervous about wanting to get a good grade. This is one of the first graded things that we had in medical school. So I sat down, I introduced myself, I told her who I was, and I was a student here to speak with her, and um, started in. You know, surprisingly, she didn't seem that excited to see me. And also, in retrospect, she was supposed to have been consented, so she knew that I was coming to talk to her, but I think she had no idea who I was or why I was there. So, you know, it started. Chief complaint, uh, you know, pa history of present illness, past medical history, and she's sort of begrudgingly talking to me, answering my questions, a bit of a monotone, rolling her eyes a little bit at some of the questions, but, you know, I'm here to get your history, continue on. So we get to family history. She tells me she has three children, who I noted at the time were really not much younger than I was, sort of in their late teens and early 20s. So by this time, we've been speaking for about 45 minutes, and we we're both a little more at ease. So you can also imagine how this is going. It's 45 minutes, and I'm just starting family history. <laughs> <laughs> so now we're into social history. Um, so she was a First Nations woman. She was a, a native Canadian who'd grown up up north um, and was now living by herself in the city where I was working. And she painted a very rich picture of her large extended family that she had. And she'd grown up with all these siblings and aunties and uncles and cousins and nephews and nieces. And then I asked her a question that, you know, I, I'm totally inappropriate, but I think this was the first time in our discussion that she'd sort of perked up and seemed at all engaged. Um, so I asked her, I said, so why do you only have three children? I mean, I actually asked her that. <laughs> um, now that I have children, I, I mean, I totally get the mistake. Um, but she said, oh, well, I, I, uh, I can't have any more children. So I'm like, ah, secondary infertility. I go back to past marital history, get my pen, and I say, so, you know, so why, why, why um, can't you have children? And she said, well, when I was 21, I had an ectopic pregnancy, and I had an emergency surgery, and when I woke up, the doctor told me that I'd had enough children, so he'd sterilized me. And I, I mean, my chest, I remember, went tight. It was like all the air had left the room. And, and I thought, what, we live in a civilized country? I mean, modern country, these things don't happen. And I looked at her and I said, well, what did you do? And she like, looked at me as if she couldn't believe I was even asking the question. And she said, nothing. You know, and so, I think that stayed with me, not just because a uh, patient spoke up so unexpectedly about this egregious act, but also because I debated whether or not I should include this in the history that I had to hand in. So I was debating whether I should speak up. And uh, I think even one or two months into medical school, I'd already internalized that there was a narrative I was here to learn and that this story wasn't part of that narrative. So I actually can't remember if I did include that story in the history that I handed in, but if I didn't, thanks for the opportunity for finally letting me finish that assignment, and also for letting me tell the story of that patient who did speak up to me so many years ago. Thank you. <laughs>